Analyzing and reporting on China's economy is most challenging. You must be fiercely competitive in examining every fact to leave no stone unturned. You must be creative in navigating through the Communist Party's world of manipulated data. Your integrity and intelligence are both tested because falsehood has become truth, while truth is ridiculed as hearsay. You must disregard your reputation because experts and prestigious organizations would contradict you. You must be kind or you'll be very lonely on the journey of uncovering China's economic truth because people won't listen to you. Not a lot of people can do that. And that's why most of us are still blinded by the false narratives of CCP's so-called economic growth. Hello everyone, welcome to Lei's Real Talk, I'm Lei. We know China's economy is plagued by an assortment of problems, high unemployment, local government debt, aging population, declining exports, but it's impossible for us to quantify them. The same is true with the real estate bubble. It's hard to know the size. An online Chinese post, however, summarized China's real estate bubble, local government debt, and banking crisis in less than 70 words. It goes like this. After three decades of a real estate boom, developers have a debt of 30 trillion yuan collectively. Homeowners owe banks 68 trillion yuan in mortgages. Local governments have a total debt of over 100 trillion, and China's four largest banks have a combined debt of 122 trillion. It's like four people playing poker, and they all lost money. But the question is, where did the money go? The answer? The money went into the pockets of the individuals who run the poker game. After Evergrande's founder was arrested, one of China's financially sound private developers, Country Garden, is also now on the brink of collapse. Although Country Garden's 1.4 trillion yuan debt is significantly less than Evergrande's 2.4 trillion, it has four times the number of unfinished housing units than Evergrande, primarily in small cities. Country Garden's demise will affect more families and have a seriously detrimental social impact. China's overall economic situation is so bad that the ruling Communist Party doesn't seem to know what to do. The CCP's internal political struggles have prevented any consensus from being reached within the party to save the economy, and the regime might have just given up. The Chinese Communist Party's National Congress holds its third plenary session every five years to discuss strategic economic direction. For example, Deng Xiaoping's famous economic reforms and opening up policy was recognized at the third plenary session of the 11th Party Congress in 1978. People have high hopes that the third plenary session of the 20th Party Congress in the fall of 2023 will come up with a strategic direction. But we're well into October and no news about the session has been heard. We can't help but wonder what has taken the leadership so long to hold the urgently needed meeting. To the outside world, however, Beijing continues to publish promising economic data against all economic indicators. And the world's reputable media outlets have repeated the CCP's narratives. Reuters, China's Q3 GDP growth shows economic recovery gaining traction. Financial Times, China's economy grows faster than expected in the third quarter. The Wall Street Journal, China stabilizes in the shadow of Country Garden and Evergrande. Modi's analytics has raised its 2023 growth projection for China to 5% from 4.9%, citing that September industrial output grew at a stronger rate than last year, beating analysts' expectations. I wonder how many economists really believe China's economy will grow 5% this year. It's not realistic even by China's official data. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, real estate sales in square meters declined 7.1% during the first eight months of 2023, when compared to 2022 and the sales in revenue declined 3.2%. From January to September this year, China's imports and exports fell by a cumulative 6.4% compared to the same period last year, with exports down 5.7% compared to 
and imports down 7.5%. If real estate and exports have both contracted, where will China's growth come from? Domestic consumption? Just as I was questioning these reports, I saw a letter written by a Chinese asset management firm to its customers. The letter has been circulating online, and the pessimistic view of the global economy expressed in the letter is very shocking. Different from the regional financial crisis of 1997 and 2008, the upcoming Great Recession will be an all-encompassing and indiscriminate strike to the economies. In such a scenario, financial markets won't be able to escape. Unfortunately, crossing the troll of this cycle will require institutional and fundamental reforms addressing the heart of the matter, a process that has historically taken at least five to 10 years. In summary, there's really no need for conservative investors to stay in the capital markets where the risk of volatility is the greatest. The prolonged Russia-Ukraine war, the recent onset of a conflict in the Middle East, and the prospect of war in the Taiwan Strait have created great uncertainties, and the discerning author attributed the problems to humans' loss of heart. To summarize, both domestic and global geopolitical environments are facing unprecedented uncertainties. An epic global recession or even war will break out inevitably in a few years. Humans are different from animals that fight with each other to the death because we have a heart with conscience. Looking at today's world, however, people have lost their heart and their animal instinct is on full display. The letter began trending quickly and the authorities decided to remove it. The removal of the letter validated its authenticity the company that published the letter issued a statement saying that the view expressed is individual opinion and doesn't represent that of the company. But many people, including myself, feel that the letter spoke with brutal honesty about China's financial market and the economy. We solemnly recommend that all investors redeem shares of our funds. This is because the stock market has lost the basis of long-term value investment and our long-term investment strategy based on corporate fundamentals has failed. Finally, the market is likely to have a small rebound in Q4. We will strive to liquidate all positions in the portfolio, and investors can propose to withdraw based on your own judgment. It's certainly hard to believe that a financial services company is asking its customers to liquidate assets and take the money and run. But in China, if the financial professional still has a heart, this is probably the only honest and sound advice he can give to clients at the moment. Close to 1 trillion renminbi left the mainland and poured into Hong Kong in August, while Hong Kong's exchange fund, or its government's fiscal reserves, which are used to support the stability of Hong Kong dollars exchange rate, dropped by 35.8 billion Hong Kong dollars which is about 4.57 billion US dollars in the same month. Some analysts pointed out that this indicates the money is flowing out of China to foreign destinations via Hong Kong on a large scale. What's said in the letter isn't anything new. People who are in the know have already taken actions. I admire the author for having the integrity of speaking truth. If it weren't for him, I might have believed that China's economy is recovering faster than expected, per the Western media reports. The letter ended by apologizing to the shareholders. We regret for being unable to create extraordinary returns for our investors and offer our deep apology to those who are still in the red. We'd like to sincerely thank all the investors for being with us. As the mood of fall is getting heavier, a drifting winter will arrive soon. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.